Hey there, welcome to the channel and in this video we'll be seeing how you can create web APIs using Next.js. Now for those of you who don't know, Next.js is a full stack framework and it allows you to create APIs along with your web pages. Now if you follow me in VS Code, all you need to do is create a API folder under the pages folder of your Next.js project. And in this API folder, create a new JavaScript file I'll just call it hello for now. And this JavaScript file should be exporting a function by default. So let's go ahead and create a function here. Every handler function which is created under the API folder of Next.js will have access to the request and response HTTP objects as parameters. And now since we have access to the request and response objects, let's just create our first very basic API, which is just returning a text as a response. So we'll say response.send and here we'll just say hello world. Let's save this, start our next year's project and see if we can hit this API. For that, we'll open our integrated terminal here on VS Code and start a development server using npm run dev. Now the application is up on port 3000. Let's just go ahead and open this. Now we are here on the home page of the application, but to access the API, all you need to do is type API in the address bar, followed by the name of your file, which is hello in our case and hit enter. And here you'll be able to see the API response, which was hello world. Now you can also send back a JSON response. And for that, all we need to do is type in response.json and instead of a text, we'll return a simple JavaScript object. So let's save this, go back to our browser, hit the API again, and now we're getting back a JSON as a response. And here by just writing two lines of code, we were able to create our first API in Next.js. And since anything that you type in the address bar of the browser is by default a GET request, what we are handling now in our handler function is a GET request. Now as a next step, let's try to create more APIs around the other HTTP methods, post, put, and delete. So what we'll do now is to create CRUD APIs around a MySQL table customers that I have on my system. Now CRUD stands for create, read, update, and delete. Now these are the four common actions that are performed on any kind of data. And in our case, we want to handle these operations for a MySQL table called customers. So let's start with the read APIs first. For that, let's go ahead and create a new API called customers. So under the API folder, let's add a new file called customers. And then again, we'll create a function which is exported by default. Now what this API handler needs to return is the list of the customers that are there in the table. Now I've already created a module which is taking care of communicating with the database, connecting to it, and then fetching information. So I'll just go ahead and import that particular module here and specifically the one function which is fetching all of the customers from the particular table. So I've imported get customers function from that module. Just to test things out, you can also create a JSON file and treat it as your database and create functions around it to fetch information from that particular JSON file. But coming back to our code here, we'll call our get customers function. And since this is an asynchronous function, we'll have to use async await syntax. And since the handler is waiting for the function to return a response, we'll also have to make this function asynchronous. And the response that we get back from our function will store it in a variable called result. And once the data has been fetched, we'll just return it using response.json. Now let's go ahead and test this API. And if you see, we've gotten a JSON response back, which is nothing but an array of the four rows that are currently present in the table. Now let's try to create one more get API where we're able to request for a particular ID in the API route itself. So for example, we can say something like API customers one, and this one represents the ID one in the table. And it should only return this one customer, which has that particular identifier. Now this ID that we're passing in the API path can be treated as a dynamic variable. Hence, this would make this particular route a dynamic route. So let's see how we can create dynamic API routes next in Next.js. So we'll go back to our API section. Here we'll create a new folder called customers. And under this particular folder, 
will create a new file but notice very carefully how i will be naming this file so i'll open square brackets type in customer id since i've decided to call the parameter id that we're passing in the route customer id i'll close square brackets and then i'll give the extension as javascript now whenever nextjs notices that there is a new api created with the file name mentioned inside square brackets it will treat that particular file name as the variable api route so it'll be much more clear when we're done with the implementation so let's copy our handler function that we created to fetch all customers we'll copy it here now instead of using get customers function we'll use the function get customer by id but this particular function needs a parameter customer id to look for that particular customer in the table so somehow we should not be able to access this particular id that will pass dynamically in our api route and read it when we're handling our api call and the way that's done is by fetching it from request.query and the variable that we'll be looking for is the same variable that we name this particular file as so our customer id will be present under request.query.customerid and then when we are calling our mysql function we'll just pass this particular customer id to it now let's save this file and test this particular api so now we should be able to pass an id as a parameter here in our api path so let's go ahead and test our new api by passing in the id 3 so as you can see we successfully got the response back and the api is only sending the details with id 3 we can give some other id like one and test it again and we'll only get the results back for the id one so in this particular example we just saw how we can create dynamic api routes by naming our files in a particular way by using square brackets and then using request.query to access that particular dynamic value now let's try to expand this particular handler which is taking in customer id as a dynamic value to also be able to delete and create rows in our customers table so what I basically want to do here is have the same handler for the API route, API customers, customer ID. Handle two more cases for delete and post methods. So if you notice here, the API route is the same. The only thing that's different is the HTTP method here. But the behavior that is expected from these three methods will be different. So we've already written the behavior for the get route, which is getting a customer by that particular customer ID. What we want to do now is to add functionality to delete a customer and to also be able to create a new customer with a new customer ID. So let's go ahead and change the handler here to support these new functionalities. And the way we'll be achieving this is by reading the HTTP method of the incoming request from the request object by accessing the method key. So whenever we'll be making a get request for this particular API route, the value of request.method will be get and that case we've already implemented where we were calling the get customer by ID method. Here I'm using a switch case for more clarity, but it's completely up to you. You can also use if else. So the two new methods that we need to handle are delete and post. And I've added a placeholder as a comment here that we need to call the respective delete and create customer functions. So let's go ahead and import those two functions and we'll be calling them here and then again testing out this API. Now one thing to notice here is that I've added a default case which is sending a 405 in the end. Now the 405 error code is thrown when a particular request is not allowed and that's what we'll be sending back when the user sends a HTTP method that our handler doesn't support yet. So in that case we're just sending a message back saying that method is not allowed. So as you can see I've imported the two functions for deleting and creating customer here. And then I'm calling these functions in their respective cases. So for the delete case, I'm calling delete customer by ID and passing in the customer ID. And in the HTTP response, I'm sending back the result that I'm getting back from the MySQL function, along with the message saying that the customer with that particular ID has been deleted. Since the post request will be creating a new row, we'll need to pass the first name and the last name values too in the body of the API request. So whenever we'll be making this post request, we'll be fetching the first name and last name values from the body of the request. So here I've just used the syntax of destructuring to fetch first name and last name from request.body. And then I'm calling the create customer function here. Now this function takes in three parameters, customer ID, first name and last name. And I'm passing them in waiting for the response. Now once the customer is created, the final HTTP response will be sent back, which will have the result from the MySQL function and a message saying that the particular customer has been created. Now to test delete and post methods, 
let's hop on to postman where we'll be testing all of these methods and let's test the post method first which is for creating a new customer so here i'm calling the api route api customers and i'm trying to create a new customer with id 10 and then i'm passing the first name and last name that will be entered for this new customer id 10 into our database so i'll hit send with the message saying that customer with id 10 created so now to verify this let's call a customers list api so we'll hit this and if you notice at the bottom there is a new entry for id 10 with the first name and last name that we just entered now let's also test our delete method where we'll be passing the customer id 10 in the api path which will be deleting our newly created user so we'll hit send wait for the response and the message says customer with id 10 deleted let's go ahead and confirm this too by hitting the fetch customers list api again so we'll scroll down and if you notice there is no customer with id 10 the last id in the table is 6. so here in this video we saw how you can use next.js to create apis with static and dynamic routes and also how you can handle different methods for the same api route now again in my example i was fetching and updating the data of a mysql table that i have on my system but for testing purposes you can just use a simple json and edit that particular json using your apis i will be uploading this code on github and you can find the link to the repo down in the description and in the future i'll be making more videos around api routes in xjs specifically around the topics of authorization and middlewares so if you're interested in those topics, subscribe to this channel and I'll see you guys in the next video.